Hi everyone, so today I am going to share with you the beam paints that arrived yesterday. Um, they came in this brown package and inside they were in this lovely canvas hand printed bag which is glorious. The paints themselves were wrapped up with this canvas around them and I'm going to keep this piece of waxed canvas it does actually say beam paints on it it's rather nice um, but because I was wanting to see if they would fit in my Kaweco uh, tin with a pen and a watercolour brush. Ta-da! There we are. So these are my six colours. Before I start, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Beam Paints. Um, it says, uh, thank you for supporting Indigenous family business. The paints um, are made with local Manitoulin wild crafted tree sap hand-gathered, washed and sifted Manitoulin stone and the finest light-fast pigments. The colours are all light-fast. Um, they strive to be a plastic-free company, so all of their packaging is either hand-cut and sanded, reclaimed white cedar and birch, or the wrappers are hand-printed canvas, uh, with plant-based inks and waxed with local beeswax. They're, these little um, stones, they call them um, stones, are they do all have the names on them. And apart from this Payne's Grey, um, which they call Timberwolf Grey, um, they did all have the pigments on. This one doesn't have the pigments on, that's what they look like underneath and they're the equivalent of a half pan so we've got these three lovely colors I've got this lovely little set I've managed to fit this water brush in um, this is a what size is this this is a size 10 um, it's a travel brush so and I've just noticed that the there we go we'll get that bit more pointy so yes I can't actually remember oh actually I think this came free with my Essie handmade paints thinking about it but it does fit in there with the Karweki um, sports um, fountain pen so I think that makes a really nice little kit to take out and about with you. You could probably, depending on the size of your pencil, would you fit a pencil in there? Well, if you'd got one that you'd worn down a little bit, I think you could probably fit a pencil in there as well. So I've got these six colours to swatch and I've also been given this, it's like a dot card, um, blueberry mountain so let me get my pad make sure everything is in view move that out of the way there we go so we are going to have a go at swatching these beautiful colors so let's see how we go. Yeah, let's find a, a watercolour brush to use. Let's use this Craftamo size 10 for now. So off we go. And I think I will wet the paper first. So I'm going to have two lots of water on the go here so that I have one clean lot. Okay. 
So I'm going to be starting, where's my cloth, with Lake Huron Teal. And this is PG17. So I think, let's see how we go. I might need to, where's my spray bottle? I'm just going to quickly wet those down in readiness because this is taking a little bit of re-wetting. See how we're going. It's kind of gathering because of the page that I'm on in my sketchbook, isn't it? Let's just try and let you run down, I think. There. So that one is Lake Huron Teal, PG-17. Let's have a go. Let's put our clean water down. And let's have a go at re-wetting Harvest Wheat. I will tilt that as well and let that run down a bit. Let's let them do a bit of running down, see what we get. There we go, there is our harvest wheat. Next, we have got Mars Violet. Just check. No, I am in view. Right, Mars Violet. Mars Violet is PR101. And I forgot to wet the paper. Let's wet the paper with a different brush and then I won't waste my paint. Okay. Ooh. Now we have Mars Violet. Next, we've got something called Cub Brown. Let's just clean my brush. Get some nice clean water. Cub Brown is PY164. So let's pop you back. And I think we'll do another little tilt. Okay. Grey ochre is an earth pigment. So there is no pigment information okay. 
it says it's a fog like colour. So let's see. And then we have got the Payne's Grey. So, oh, they're calling it Timber Wolf. Payne's Grey in brackets. That's got quite a lot of a purpley kind of blue in it. Um, it's a gorgeous colour. And then perhaps right down the middle, <laughs> we will do the, what was this called? Blueberry Mountain. Oh. Wow, look at Blueberry Mountain. Oh, I really wish I'd bought that now. Let that run a little bit. Gosh, there we go. Look at those glorious colours. Right, we need those to dry and then I might try and do a little bit of mixing in a moment. So I'll dry this off and then I will come back. Okay, so we are dry. And look at that glorious colour, Lake Huron Teal. I just love it. I think it's got a little bit of granulation. Then we'll do Harvest Wheat, which is a lovely colour too. We've got Mars Violet. You can definitely see the granulation in that. We have got Cub Brown. Look, wouldn't that be beautiful for trees? We've got Grey Ochre, which I think has got some granulation in. I think I put my heat tool a bit too close. But it is a very, it's a, it's like, it's a warmer grey. It's got a brownish tinge to it. And then look at Timberwolf that they are calling Payne's Grey, but it is gorgeous. That's granulating as well. And then the little colour dot that I got, Blueberry Mountain. I don't know what pigment that is, but there you go. So, let us have a little play. I've put the colours on here at the top, just so that we can remember which ones they are. Let's make sure I get into shot, like so. And I'm going to have a bit of a play. So let's see what happens when we mix our Payne's Grey with our wheat. Well, that's interesting. What else can we mix? We could mix the wheat. With the Mars Violet. Maybe not enough wheat. Let's add a bit more wheat. There we go. What else can we mix? Let's mix our teal. We 
which I think is the only one that possibly hasn't got quite as much pigment. It takes a little bit more to get that pigment out. So let's mix our teal with our wheat. Oh, there we go. And we'll mix the teal. I'm doing this randomly. We'll mix the teal with the timber wool for Payne's Grey. Oh, we get like an indigo. Wow. Uh, let's do something with our cub brown. What should we do with cub brown? Cub brown. Oh no, sorry, this isn't. This is the grey ochre that they likened to fog. What should we mix that with? Um... Let's mix that with the Mars Violet. Gosh, Mars Violet is very strong. Need a lot more of this grey ochre. It's not making a great deal of difference. Sorry, that was cub brown, wasn't it? There we go, we are getting a slightly different brown now. Let's try our grey ochre. with the wheat. There we go. Now let's try cub brown. With the Timber Wolf, the Payne's Grey. I think these are really nice landscape colours, and that's probably why I've picked them because they are very much what I do most of. Um, maybe we could do fog. We do fog with teal. So we have got, if we do teal, which is a stunning colour, with the tiniest bit of Payne's Grey. There we go. So I have been able to make a couple. That's more like a fair tree green. We've got a, a bright spring kind of green there. We've got a couple of greens. Maybe I'm lacking on the green side. 
Um, yeah. Maybe if I add the tiniest bit, let's take our wheat and let's try adding a small bit of, that goes brown. I was wondering if the wheat and the Payne's Grey might make a green, but in this case it doesn't. Maybe if we add, ah, okay, so wheat, Payne's Grey plus the teal gets me what I would say is more of an olivey um, green. Right, let's get a bigger brush. Bigger brush coming up. And we'll just put a bit of water down to start with. And let's see what happens when they all just merge on the page. So let's say we start off with some of this teal. And we'll add a bit of the yellow in, a dash or two of the Mars Violet because it's really strong. We can add a little bit of the Cub Brown in. Perhaps we'll put the Fog Grey at the top here. And the Payne's Grey or Timberwolf at the bottom. Do some splats. A bit more yellow. Maybe we'll let that move a little bit. You can see that it's doing some very nice things. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. Come back. All right then, let's bring this up a bit closer. Um, that one hasn't quite dried yet, but you can see some of my mixes here. The other colors that I've been able to achieve just with my six original colours. And then at the bottom here, you can see where I've just allowed everything to mingle on the page. And none of it is causing a problem. It is all looking rather lovely. So, there we go. We have our 
six beam paints that are, and a pen and a, <laughs> and a paintbrush that have now been completely splattered. But that will just wash off. Um, yes, I'm very happy with those as a wonderful little landscape outdoor set. There's enough colours there for me to be able to do a bit of urban um, sketching while I'm out and about as well. And I've got a bonus with the Blueberry Mountain. So rather lovely. There we go. Those are the handmade equivalent of half pan um, beam paints and um, yeah, all at light fast. Wonderful stuff. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you've got some beam paints and do you have any special favourite colours or not. Alright, take care until next time.